Ding, ding. Do, do, should we ring a bell? Like, bing, bing, we're in the episode now. <laughs> the yeah, random gotta, chatter for Patreon's over. Now we're in the show. <laughs> have something around here that make a bell sound. I had a bell. It's all the way over by the TV. This is a little <laughs> baby ducky toy that has weird... <laughs> it sounds like I a gotta send you, I, I, gotta, I gotta send you a picture of this because this is the weirdest <laughs> toy. I don't understand <laughs> the purpose of this. That's um, Tom's voice, by the way, everybody. You haven't heard him in a while. I haven't heard anything from any of us in a while. Had a brain break. You want to understand why I took a brain break and wasn't doing episodes? Become a patron. We just talked about it for like 40 minutes. <laughs> and yeah. talk shit about Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> yeah, punk ass bitch. <laughs> so what we were about to edge our way into that I decided... Sorry, I forgot we're recording the actual episode. You can hear me screwing around with the water bottle. Fucking screw around. So what I wanted to dip into something... That's been on my mind. Um, first of all, to clarify for everybody, we're going to a loose. Uh, we were a little more structured phase. Now we're going to a looser phase of the show. We're going to go in phases, and that's the nature of this show. Um, one thing that's been on my mind is uh, specifically yesterday. So I had this idea. I had this like topic I wanted to, to, that I don't understand. I'm not going to tell what the topic is because it's not really important. But there's this topic that's kind of a controversial topic that I don't get. And actually, no, it sounds stupid not to tell what it is. So I don't get Jordan Peterson. I don't, I don't, um, I don't understand the, the Jordan. I understand like the people on the right, mm -hmm. um, their interest in Jordan Peterson. But I know a lot of people that are very liberal that also really um, enjoy Jordan Peterson. They don't agree with him on everything, but they enjoy him. And I don't get it. Not in the sense that like, I think they're wrong. Like, I just, I don't know enough about him to get it. And I know somebody who is a very intelligent, a very good hearted person. And who's also very liberal who likes Jordan Peterson. And I, it was like an offhand comment. This person had made to me once like, oh, you know, like they smiled and like, I love Jordan and not in the, like the, I believe everything he says way, but just like, like I appreciate the way the guy thinks. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to talk to that person. Excuse me. I wanted to talk to that person on the show. I'm like, hey, explain this to me. Like, I'm curious. Like, I've read one of his books. It was okay. I thought parts of it were interesting. I thought parts of it were meandering. I thought parts of it were total bullshit. I gave it like a, I think I gave it like a two and a half out of five stars. It was a mediocre book. I think it's called 12 Antidotes to Life or something like that. It's his most recent one. He only has two. And so I wanted to talk to this person. Like, hey, explain this to me. What is it about him that you appreciate? You know, obviously part of that conversation, what are the things you don't agree that he says? Like I, in the book, I thought that he was kind of a sexist. Mm -hmm. I might be right. I might be wrong. Like I said, I've only read one book of his. So I asked this person like, hey, you want to come on the show and talk to me for an hour? Explain to me like, explain to me what's appealing about Jordan Peterson because I'm not getting it. I think that he's like... I don't think he's that smart. Um, <laughs> and, and that's not an insult to him as a person. I just like reading his stuff, like his thoughts are really disorganized and I don't get it. So obviously I'm missing something. I even listened to a couple episodes of his podcast, which isn't really a podcast. It's just a recording of him touring the country and talking about himself for an hour. <laughs> that's literally, have you listened to it? It's literally like he talked no. about. I, I gotta be honest. I don't even know who the fuck this guy is. He's he's like um he's he's a Canadian, and but he's like a the conservatives in America love him because he's like a like a pull yourself up. But obviously, I don't understand him well enough. I want to talk to somebody about him, as I understand right. it. He's been a ho he's a friend of Joe Rogan. He's a he's on the carnivore diet. That was another thing about him. But like he's like a pull yourself up by the bootstrap kind of person, and like I just don't get it. So I wanted to talk to this person, and they're like um. I prefer not to because it's, I'm afraid that people will take what I say out of context and call me out publicly. Right. And I was like, at first I was like, what? And then I started thinking about it. I'm like, oh, that's gross. 
not not mm-hmm. on the person who said no's part, but like that's horrible because this person is a really good, hard person, a really intelligent person, one of the more intelligent people I know. And for this person to be afraid, that's yeah. terrible. And so that really got me thinking about it. And it happened to be the exact same day that that video, I don't know if you've seen it, the video of Obama talking about how much call-out culture sucks came out. No. Oh, it's fantastic. Because, you know, have the, it's, it's, it's fantastic because it's so funny. Here's this guy who's like the paragon of the left, the new left, as people like to call it. And the moment he says something about, you know, like, this is kind of bullshit... Now people are like, "Oh, he's all right." <laughs> like what? <laughs> like really? He he sw- he switched from the far left to the far. You know, like he was the socialist. You know, like <laughs> the, the socialist president that we had, and now he's an all right guy. Like, well, that's good. Well, that just kind of goes to show that you know public opinion can sway, or a portion of the public, their opinion can sway at any moment with just the right. Um, because you look at these people in you know in in the public eye, and you only choose and make the judgment on whether or not you like them or don't or support them or don't off of what they present to you and what you see of their character and their opinions. But there's no way you ever know a hundred percent. I mean, I don't know a hundred percent my family like their viewpoints on things. I, you always find out new things. You never know 100% about anybody at any time, no matter what. The only way you'll ever get that is if you're able to matrix, connect your brain to theirs, you know, avatar, connect with two weird fucking things, and you can hear each other's thoughts and know each other's thoughts and download all of their full, you know, programming. So when someone like this comes out and shows something different, they're like, oh, hey, um, I kind of like that. I guess I kinda, the other person's not so bad. Well, I don't, I'm not sure that the, um, when I say that he's being called all right, I don't think that the people on the right are calling him that. No, I don't think that they've accepted him. I'm saying that the people on the left have turned against him. That's what I mean. Is it changes? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so stupid because literally what he's saying is so eloquent. You know, you know Obama, whether people agree with Obama or not, the dude mm-hmm. is eloquent. The dude can talk. Okay. And... But what he's I don't I don't know the whole of I didn't see the whole recording of the event. I just saw the, the clip of him talking about call out culture. But from what I could tell, it was him on stage with a girl who is a classmate of one of his daughters in college. Mm-hmm. And I, I assume she's interviewing him. Um and he's he says basically he's like um a couple things he says that are that are worth pointing out. First of all, he's he says he calls it casting stones. He's like, it's just people throwing, you know, it's just like people casting stones. And he says, casting stones is not activism. Yeah. You know, you think you're, you're being an activist by, you know, like attacking everybody for, for not being perfect. You know, and, and you're not going to get anywhere. And it's, it's just like so many, like the, the, he uses the word purity in there. And that stood out to me. Like he says something about purity. And I started thinking about that. I'm like, oh my God, that's really what it is. And it's it's just as obnoxious on both ends of the spectrum, of course. Um, I've said this multiple times on the show, but this idea of like, this is how you have to be. And if you deviate out of this, then we will destroy you. Huh. And it's, it's so stupid because it's not realistic. People are complex. You know, good people do bad things. They have flaws. Bad people sometimes do good things. Or um, one thing he says in there, he says, the people that you're fighting against, the people you don't like, they probably love their children. They love their family. Yeah. You know, and he's probably making a direct reference to Trump, I would assume. But it's like, there's a complexity to people that these, this culture doesn't take into account. Where it's like, oh, you know, say somebody like a Matt Damon. I don't know if you ever heard this, but like Matt Damon is, he's a pretty left guy. And he's a pretty likable guy, from what I can tell, at least publicly. And he said something at one point. I don't know if what it was about. It might have been about Me Too. I think he said at one point, like, Me Too went a little crazy in the sense that it was accusing somebody of doing something and they didn't actually do it. Yeah. And it wasn't like a big statement. It was just kind of like a small statement. He's like, well, maybe we all need to calm down just a little bit. And people just eviscerated the guy. Right. 
And, it, you know, it's like, dude, <laughs> number one, he's not wrong. You know, like we are not, you know, I hate to say it, but lynching, guess what? It's it's a word that's been popped up in the last few weeks. People get pissed off because it's used out of context of like, you know, uh, uh, out of race, out of context yeah. of race. Yeah. But like that idea of like taking somebody and stringing them up publicly. Mm-hmm. It's not a not, it's not, <laughs> it's not a, it's not the wrong word to describe what's going on in some way. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's our own fault for, you know, giving the the public, you know, this entity that does not actually, you know, it's not an actual thing. It's just we give people and they know that they can start saying things under the guise of like public opinion as, you know, what decides what's right or wrong. It's like at any time you can choose. I mean, that's why you watch like, yeah, okay. Um, today coffee's bad for you. Tomorrow coffee's good for you. Today coffee's bad for you. Tomorrow coffee's kind of good for you. It's like. Right. And imagine at some point somebody was telling, you know, like we find and decide coffee's not right for you. And they go, you drink coffee once. Yeah. Therefore you are a pariah. Right. Yeah. No. So it's like. <laughs> Stupid we're allow- when you put we're it in allow- that context. We're allowing the pop culture engine because that's all this is, you know. I think it's not even pop culture. Like, well, no, because pop culture has become the only culture. Let's be honest. Well, I don't. I don't think it. Re- I wouldn't say pop culture. I just say literally culture. It's like bigger than pop culture. Well, no. That's what I'm saying is what was once just pop culture is now the only thing that we have because now we're talking about actors and what they're things what they're saying musicians what they're saying what they're saying like politicians and the pop culture like everything it's all now meshed donald trump is the mm, president gotcha i get what you're saying now yeah you know what i mean it's now all one thing and it's all just a big dumpster fire of of useless people with useless you know that are no better than you or i and have no more intelligence than you or i saying things that are you know becoming Either well, and and the average person has a megaphone, or... right? So the, the the average person has been raised up to the level of a public figure without having to actually become a public figure. Exactly. So Which, before and, you had to, you know, fight for the ability to prove yourself that you could be in a position to be a voice for the people or be a voice for um, an idea or something like that. But now it doesn't matter. All you have to have is fucking self service. And you can, you know, have a login and now you're able to call out, you know, someone like, you know, like Matt Damon. You can call out Matt Damon for how dare you say that about me too. Who are you? I'm Shannon from, um, you know, Hoboken and I'm in eighth grade. It's like, and go I fuck did this, yourself. And I did this on go the toilet. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> go fuck yourself. Yeah. Well, and go and fuck yourself. And it's not even that it's a problem that everybody has a voice because obviously good things come out of that. You know, the, the, there's a lot of good that comes out of that. It's more that I think it's, it's the problem isn't even the megaphone. It's the lack of thought put into things before they go public. In the sense that before, when, you know, before we had social media, if you're going to release a press release, you crafted it. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. Proofread it nine times. Yeah, and you you know you check to make sure the wording was right, and then if you Fact messed up, it was, yeah. you messed up. But you know you, there still wasn't perfect then. But by the time that you actually put that out, you were sure that's what you wanted to say, right? So there was a responsibility to your thought. Right. But now when you can just you know bust something off with one thumb as you're waiting in line at the bank. And, you know, about an article that you didn't even read. You just read the first three sentences, got annoyed, jumped over to Twitter and went... Um, spelling errors and grammatical errors and um, punctuation errors and all this bullshit because no one's fucking paying attention to what they're doing. They're just like, I need to say something. People need to hear it. People are going to react. There's no thinking. People right. that read and these things and react to them, they don't think. There's no thinking at all. It's well, they have do, 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 no noise, responsibility noise, 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 noise. to be right anymore. Yeah, no. And, and and I don't mean that the before everybody was right, but I meant that everybody, if you said something publicly before and you were wrong, then you were responsible for that. You know right. what I mean? Like if, if I said, uh, um, Donald Trump has three nipples, <laughs> right? No. I could do that in Twitter in four seconds. 
most people probably won't even read it depending on, you know, like if, if who I am and how many followers I have, right? Most people might not even put any thought into it or whatever. But before, if I said that and I was wrong, you know, if I was trying to say it seriously, not as a joke, and yeah. I was wrong, then another publication would come out and say like, dude, <laughs> this is not true. Right. And, but now that like there's fact checking doesn't even happen. It, you know, you just have these Twitter fights, but there's like no no responsibility to truth or the attempt to elicit truth. Right. And that's kind of goes with what I said about, um, you know, before back in the day, in the good old days, you had to earn your position. You had to prove yourself over years and years. You had to build up your portfolio and your credentials. You had to have some type of experience and earn the trust of, those around you and those that help make the call and then those that would consume what it is you're putting out that you were meant to be there, you know, like it's the whole, you know, like people would say like fake it till you make it. It's like, well, if you do that, you know, back then you would get called out, but now because you'd be found out the the truth would come to light that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about or what the fuck you're doing. Um, But nowadays it doesn't matter. Nobody kind of, gives a shit that anybody talking about anything, whether or not they know what they're saying or not. And then if someone comes up saying, this person doesn't know, then you'll have someone else attack them saying that they're just, um, attack them in some way saying that like, oh, well, they're just um, trying to tear this person down because, you know, because of their, you know, their race or their this or that, or um, they're just being hateful and um, you can't. Well, people are racking up asshole something. points. Yeah, it's, that's like, people just fucking sucking. Righteousness and asshole points. You know, it's, it's like this social proof of like, and this is something that Obama mentions in the thing he says too, where he's like, he's like, ooh, I really got you there. It's like, mm-hmm. so what? Yeah. What did fucking do? You know, like, what have you actually accomplished? You know, I think that's one of the most important parts he says in there. If you really want to change things, this isn't going to change shit. He no, doesn't no, say that, what obviously. Has but Nothing has changed. What's changed is you know what what's changed is people are getting sick of it. The fact that you have somebody like him coming out and saying this, it's not that anything's changed with Obama. It's literally that everything's got to the point where where people where it's spread the, the annoyance with this has spread all the way across the spectrum and everybody's starting everybody but the most fringe. You know, it hasn't spread to the fringe. It started at the center and it spread out from the center to the left and to the right. And then slowly it's moving out further and further where people are like, oh, this is bullshit. Oh, this is bullshit. You know, and then what you're going to left be left with is the fringe. And hopefully that's, I mean, hopefully that's what happens is a good thing because, you know, obviously the fringe is always going to be there and the fringe is always going to be edgy. The fringe is always going to be pissing off a lot of people. That's mm-hmm. the purpose of the fringe. But for so long, the fringe has been really close to the center on both sides. And it's taken up so much of the bolt of both of the sides, but then it gets exhausting. I think, and people are like, you know what? I'm tired of not being able to make a mistake. Yeah, I'm tired of the purity police. Like, so what? You know, like obviously, you know, if you rape somebody, that's like not a so what. But, but you know, if you accidentally, uh, I don't know, you say the wrong word that has a connotation that you're unaware of, or you forgot, or you just Maybe you say retard. Right. Not because you're trying to be a dick, but because, you know, you're fucking 60 years old and for 45 years of your life, that was an okay word to say. Oops. I forgot. Shit. Trained musician. And the song, the moment, the momentum had to retard. Uh, (laughs) No, yeah. I mean, just look at how there's so many people that try to change and suppress things that actually happened in history. You know, it's like we need to take down anything that resembles or shines light on that time in our, you know, past that things were not sunshine and rainbows. Right. Yeah. You can't rewrite the past. Yeah. It's like, so you do realize that, you know, taking down the statue or in this flower, changing a textbook you know that doesn't remove it from happening well even worse it makes it more likely to happen again exactly so that's just i mean proof positive right there you know that 
we live in a world of soft, spineless fucking pains in the ass that like, you know, just don't, I don't know. It's hard for me to fucking just well, it's, explain without getting like overly uh, upset about it because it's like you see it no matter where you go, what you do, you hear it everywhere and there's really no reason for it. You know, it's like, I'm not, I'm not supporting anybody's like anti, you know, views or negative views or anything like that. But it's like, I do understand you can't have one without the other, you know? So it's like all of these goody two shoes that claim to be goody two shoes are really aren't, you know, we're all fucking shit. Like I think I've mentioned it before that humans are, you know, just disgusting, nasty creatures that some are good, some are bad, some are both. Um, there is no, you know, this utopian um, perfect existence that people, you know, a lot of people, I believe, have a delusion thinking that, you know, we either are in or were in and need to get back to. Never were, you know. Disgusting things happen. Horrible things happen. Shitty things happen. Really great things happen. Beautiful things happen. It all happens. And it all happen within one day, within one minute. You know, the moment a baby is born, someone else is getting their head bashed in with a baseball bat somewhere. It's just the world that we live in. You're not going to fucking change it. You're not going to fucking remove, you know, okay, we're going to ban guns and uh, make these things illegal and these bad things are never going to happen. Okay, well, we should make uh, arson illegal. Oh, well, wait. Yeah, it, before it there were guns, oh. people were stabbing each other. People were hitting right. each other with with clubs. Yeah. But it's it's illegal to start a fire. Oh, then that does make sense because all these fires are burning and some of these fires were started by people. That doesn't make sense. It's illegal to start fires like that because you want to know why? No matter what the fuck you do, people are going to do dumb fucking shit and bad right. things are going to happen. Sometimes it's going to be natural. Sometimes it's not. We create laws because of the exceptions. Yeah. Right. That's that's the purpose of a law. Now, first of all, we talk about guns there. Well, I don't even like guns. Yeah. I don't like using them. It's not an appeal to me. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, a topic like that, people are reactionary on it, is my point there, is people are reactionary on it. Like, this is a solution. This is a sol- Is it really? I don't know. Yeah. You, yeah. Nobody on either side has shown me proof that one thing is true or not true. Yeah. And, and that's, it, not to go into that topic specifically, but that's the problem, is people are reacting and putting out solutions and... Which, okay, that's good. That's great that people have ideas for solutions. That's how a civil society works. Is That's how a democracy works. People have ideas and we try to fix things and we try to make things better. That's how it works. But when you put it out and you say, this is the answer, this is the only answer, and you haven't done any of the work to prove that it is the answer, it is the only answer, then you're just as full of shit as everybody else. Mm-hmm. You, when you say, you know, like, for example, if you, we'll say... Um, one of the things that, that Bernie Sanders wants to do is relieve college debts, right? Mm-hmm. That sounds like a really good thing. Mm-hmm. I, d- I don't have the research. I don't know if that, if that is a good thing in the long run or not. If, what if that causes problems we don't see? I don't know. Um, and it's not because he hasn't proven that or disproven that. It's literally, I just don't know enough about it. I just mm-hmm. picked a random topic. Right. But that's the way that we look at things is people put out solutions, but then we try to figure out which one's the best one. Not because it's your idea that it's the best one. And not because you don't like that person so their idea is not the right one. It's because we picked the one that works because we're not making decisions for ourselves. Yeah. We're making decisions for all of us. And we have to pick the ones that work. And like, for example, one of the stupidest things I heard was they wanted... This was probably 10 years or more ago. Somebody wanted to take um, Huckleberry Finn and remove the N-word from it. Yeah. Which, okay, I can understand where a person would come from from that perspective, especially if they're black. Like, I don't want to hear that word. Mm -hmm. But the thing about that book, first of all, everybody should understand that the reason, one of the big reasons that book is so important is because it was huge in the civil rights movement Mm -hmm. in the sense that it, Mark Twain put a black character in a book and at a time when black people were commonly not thought of as people. Right. They were property. 
sorry, not they were property. They were thought of as property. They were never right. property. Um, just want to clarify that. <laughs> but he wrote this book at that time. And he wrote a book about a black man who was a man, a human being. Yeah. And in fact, he's probably the most important person in that book because without him, Huck wouldn't have survived. Hey, he's, he's the, the only adult. He's the only adult and he's the only one who gives a shit about him. Here's this kid wandering the world, you know, like he's yeah. going down the fucking river on a raft. Nobody gives a shit if this kid lives or dies except for this character. Yeah. And he specifically chose to call that. I'm going to say the word here because it is the character's name. It's not a word I like to say, but he specifically chose to call him nigger Jim. Yeah. And I believe he chose, I will not use that word any, in any other context except for saying that character's name. The reason that he chose to name that character that was to continually remind you of I'm presenting this person who is a good human being. And every time you say their name, you have to say this gross word. Yeah. And that is why if you removed it from the book, you cut the balls of that book off because it is that conflict of that gross, ugly word in his name against his humanity that makes that book have meaning. Well, I feel like it also it makes the reader as they're going through it and they're reading it. If you know, in that time, you know, if a person was reading it and has um, that that viewpoint um, on uh, on black people, you know, and has you know they were raised that way or um, just by influence, you know, look at um, the black community that way, and they go in and read that book, it's changing their mind, you know, or it's making them because they're starting to fall in love with the character. They're starting to see the character as he's intended. And then, but then they're reminded and they're having that conflict of like, well, I don't like that, that, you know, that he's being called that. Or like, I don't like that. I'm, you know, you start realizing about yourself, I think, or a lot of people did. Right. It would be like some creating... People, some people probably didn't. Some people were just like, hey, I love that book because it calls him that. This isn't even as strong, but it would be like creating a hero in a book and naming him asshole. Mm. Like this, not even a hero, but just like a good hearted person that you're just, you know, like the, the only kind person in a book mm. and then name the character asshole. So every time you have to say it and you just get nauseated after a while. Mm. And that was the literary purpose was to confront people and to remove that from the history of it. Is you're not under that people wouldn't be understanding how gross that word really was and still is exactly, and that's that's what I mean. Is you know these things are snapshots in time. You know it wasn't like that was, um, you know it's not some other book. You know it's like written hundreds of years after it happened. Something crazy. You know like the Bible. Um, <laughs> you know it's something that was written during the time that was relevant to what was happening. Right, and he wasn't writing a book thinking that we were going to be reading it today, let's be honest. No, yeah, and so it was something that documents, you know, actual, you know, not, you know, an actual story about um, a kid going down on a raft, but, you know, actual time in society and in culture. Um, and so by removing it or changing it and augmenting it, you know, it's now going to if you do do that if you do that in the future over time now there's no there's a blur between how we got from this point to that point you know right the line the lines are not bold and and bright they're just kind of foggy it's like well i mean, I mean do you, where do you where do you stop do you then make it to where if you're not going to, you know, if you're going to remove that, um, that word from, you know, the books and, um, like, well, it's, it's, it, it, it represents, you know, hatred and all the things that happened and yeah, that happened. So it's like, are you going to go further back and remove, well, no, 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 black people are never slaves. And you're going to go back and further. Yeah, no, 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 this never happened. It's like, where does it end? It doesn't end. And then right. it's like, well, if you, if you don't do that and you leave it to like, yes, black people were slaves. Um, they were considered, you know, less than people. Um, was it one third or something like that? I think it, it doesn't matter. It was a fraction. Anyways, we don't yeah, need to get that like, right. Yeah. But there was a few. <laughs> but there, no, but the, you know, but the, 
there were people that would even then call people, you know, whatever that fraction was because they're like, oh yeah, you're less than, you know, him. So it's like, people are going to see that, you know, kids or whoever growing up or people that are learning about history are going to find out these things and be like, well, okay. um, There's this middle section that's missing, you know, it's like, how did we get from here to here? If we don't show the steps and the moves forward that these people, you know, like Twain took and whatever else to change cult, you know, to, or help influence and for people to start making the choice for change. You can't just show the bright side. You can't well, just when show you start painting the over the past. The ending. How do you decide where to stop? That's what I mean. And who There's decides no where to stop? You know, like, okay, so we, we, we erased that word. Well, what about the word WAP? You know, yeah, that, yeah. that's, that's a bad word for Italian. Okay, let's erase that one. What about yeah. the word, you know, and you just start erasing those words. You go, what about the word asshole? What about this? Yeah. And then the more you start erasing things, it's it's literally like the older I get and the more <laughs> I start um, thinking about the world, the more of a prophecy 1984 as a book is. Mm-hmm. The way that they take words and manipulate them and they erase history and they create past histories. That's how you, that's how you control something. Yeah. And I know that these people who want to do these things, their intention is not to do these bad things that they really like, this is a hurtful word. Um, Let's get rid of it so that people won't be hurt. Well, maybe it's hard to say, but maybe on those things, they should be hurt. People should be hurt. I'm getting because, fucking tired of these people saying that you got to stop people from getting hurt and their feelings being hurt. That's fucking part of being... Oh, the feelings thing. I don't give a shit. People should have their feelings hurt all the time. That's how you grow up. Right. And and But I mean like hurt, like beyond well, just physically. the feelings. It's like maybe, maybe you should feel that because guess what? If we think about um, the Holocaust, if we stop talking about the Holocaust, if we stop mm-hmm. teaching the Holocaust, then we can forget about it. Or it can just become a story or a fairy tale. Why and that, and the more weak that becomes, the more weak that pain and that memory of that event becomes, the more possible it is for it to happen again. Right. And you're because also... If you don't feel that pain, you don't wince from it. Yeah. And then there's... You're, you're, um, you're shaming and insulting all of the people that suffered during that time, you know? You're, for, right. you're making them be forgotten. You're pretty much saying, no, we need to forget about all these people because, um, you know, they're not worth remembering. It's like, well, it doesn't matter what comes along with it. It's like, well, if we remember them, then it's it's hurtful and it makes us feel bad. It's like, well, imagine how they fucking felt when they were fucking yeah. being treated that way. About they were like, imagine the people yeah. that were oh, chained and whipped. You? And... <laughs> exactly. So by keeping that, you're not glorifying it you're not doing it in order to you know put it up on a pedestal of like look how awesome and great this was it's like no like remember because if yeah. you forget then that this might be might be you next time and there, i mean there's there's a weird gray area in here too like we obviously want to acknowledge that there's you know like for example there's a book i really want to read um dick gregory was this great comedian he was a black comedian um, the reason I mentioned that he's black is because it's important for the part that I'm about to tell. If I don't clarify that, he's going to seem like a complete asshole. But um, he was this great comedian, but he was also really involved in the civil rights movement. Mm-hmm. And he wrote a book, and I'm actually not going to say the word in this context, but it is the N word. That's the title of the book. Not yeah, I've seen that one. not literally the N word, but the word that I'm not going to say is the title. Right. And that's a gray area. I said it before. But in this context, I don't feel comfortable saying it. Right. And and isn't it kind of funny though that like we're talking about this and it's like well, we're going to remove the word from what we're saying. It's like you, it still puts. But I think by keeping it, you know, a topic or keeping it something, you know, keeping that word alive is it still creates that tricky situation to where it's like you know we're all we all know what we're talking about, what we're thinking about, and we're right. all feeling different things about it. Well, that's imagine, the Louis C.K. joke. But, exactly. But imagine if you remove the word and it like, you know, it's like as if we were able to erase it from our memory at ever. This whole conversation wouldn't, wouldn't make any sense. Yes. And know? for the people who don't know the Louis C.K. joke is essentially when you say N-word, I say, I say the word in my head. So fuck you for making me think it. <laughs> Which worse, is a damn Now you've made us all say it. And, and I know he's obviously um, not everybody's favorite person right now, but yeah. he's damn right on that joke. 
but, but that's, but that's the thing is like even the reason I won't have good points. The reason I won't say it in this context is because I already said the word once in this episode. And even though I don't intend to use it in a bad way, intent isn't the only thing that we should take into mind. Right. We should also take connotation. And that if I say it twice in an episode, then it starts to look more and more like I'm just trying to find excuses yeah, to you're say finding that word. reason to say it. <laughs> exactly. So those are things that should be taken in mind too. Once again, not black or white. Everything's gray. But one of the reasons I don't want to read this book is number one, uh, if I read it, um, I, I do want to read it. You have to say that word in your head. No, is imagine sitting on a bus reading that book. <laughs> or, you, just do the, you just do the middle school thing and wrap it in um, uh, brown paper. Or imagine, you know, like I finish reading it on the Kindle and then it pops up on my Goodread. Chad has just finished reading. <laughs> Chad gives four stars uh, to. I don't think there's anything wrong with that because. But no, it's not that there's anything wrong with it, obviously, because it's a, written by a black man about right. civil rights. Right. But if like you're out in public and if someone sees you reading it, they have an issue, that's their fucking problem. Right. But it's still uncomfortable. Yeah. And that's something that should be acknowledged. It doesn't mean it's right, but we do still live in the society. So the discomfort is still real. And that's love. a weird gray area where <laughs> it's like, love. I know I'm actually, by reading that book, I'd be doing the opposite of what it looks like I'd be doing. Yeah. And, and that's, Maybe that's the genius of Dick Gregory, right? If you dressed up like a Nazi or like a fucking um, white supremacist and you're sitting on the bus, like just yeah. go get your head freshly shaven. Go get your yeah, if I'm wearing a pillowcase on my head and reading that book. Get and, yourself a pair of suspenders, some, some cuffed Levi's and some Doc Martens and go sit on a bus and read that book with some like glasses just down to the tip of your nose. And you won't make it three blocks. Um, <laughs> Amazing. I'll take that picture. But that's, isn't that the genius of Dick Gregory is in a way... In a way, he wrote a book that only black people could read. <laughs> right? Like, there's a big fuck you, a big fuck you <laughs> in the sense, like, cool. Yeah, good luck reading this book. <laughs> what does that mean I can't read the book, cunt? Um, I don't know. It depends. Depends on who you're dating. <laughs> they want to lop off your balls while you're asleep. <laughs> but it's a weird gray area. And I know we're veering around to this, but there's so many, so many little hot buttons in here that don't make sense. Like the, that doesn't make sense that I should feel the way that I do, but I do because mm-hmm. it is a reality. And that is totally akin to the person not wanting to talk about Jordan Peterson, not because they're a coward or not because they're wrong, but because, yeah, there is a good chance that. If we had that conversation, somebody would take something they said out of context and use it against them online. That is a reality. But, and I mean, that's the thing that we're talking about that sucks is the, not whether those things are right or wrong. I think it's very clear that that's wrong, or at least to me it is. But it still happens. Yeah, that does. And I don't see how that's any different than being a racist. Taking, uh, something, taking something somebody says... And using it against them as a weapon is... I don't see any difference between that and taking somebody's skin color and using it against them as a weapon. You're taking something that's arbitrary. It's actually even worse, I think, because with racism, you're only just going off of something that's out of their control. Like, they, you have no choice mm. of being born with, you know, one pigment to another in your skin. Right. Um, but what a person believes in and what a person kind of thinks and feels like those are choices. You know, you, you choose, you know, to, to some degree, you know, I'm sure there is uh, influence on things or, you know, you, you get to a certain thought process or um, belief system just by just share whatever it is that makes up our, our human personality and our, our makeup. But uh, that's more personal. That's, I think, you know, it's more me, you know, I could have been born, you know, if looking any any kind of way. But the person I become, that's that's me. You know, I could go through some sort of physical change, you know, and that's no longer who I am. Who I am is on the inside, you know, all that. Um, so I feel like if you're making judgments and treating someone and just take a whole, you know, kind of race and being a racist and treating someone a certain way by being a racist and just replace that with, 
you know, their their beliefs and their thoughts and their feelings and things like that. That's that I would say that's worse. Well, I think what's even worse about it is most of the time you're taking something and using it against them in a way that the person didn't intend. So it's even right. worse because you're you're taking their personage yeah, and using it against them to make them something that they aren't even. You know, to, yeah, and then to, it's harder and it's and people because it's not looked at or thought of as being, you know, a heinous way to treat another human being or all like that. It's harder to sway it back to where it was before because people just be like either not care or not listen. And the ones that do listen and did take the um, the other person's opinion about you a heart, they're probably not going to have their mind changed by anything you say because their mind's already been made up and they've chosen to listen to this other person. And for whatever reason, you know, then maybe racism as we, you know, have always known it, then can play and be like, well, I'm not going to listen to you because not only do you have horrible viewpoints, but you know, you're a, um, you're this or you're that. And I don't like those types of people, you know, it's just, I don't know. People just are shitty, and I'm just going to keep saying it because it's true. Well, f- first of all, um, anybody that's listening that's trying to figure out, like, oh, are Tom and Chad, are they, <laughs> are they on the left or are they on the right? Stop thinking like that. Yeah. It doesn't matter. The stuff we're talking about shouldn't matter about somebody's politics. The way you treat other human beings should be across the board. Right. That's all I give a fucking shit about. That's it, it, this is literally. I would I would say this about anybody, like taking somebody's words out of context and using it against them is a dick move. Period. It doesn't matter, and that's one of the grossest things about culture is because people do dick moves, and other people give them high fives just because they don't like the person they did the dick move against. Well, yeah. guess what? Everybody high fiving, you're a dick too. And those two people high fiving might not even agree or like each other, but in that moment, they unite over their douchey hatred and shithead feelings towards another human being or another group of human beings or something like that. Now, where does that get you? Where does that get you? Nothing. Nowhere. It's all douchery and it's, it's not humane. It's cruelty. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's disgusting. It really is. Yes. Uh, yeah. So. There was something else that I was going to bring up, but I totally forgot it. <laughs> oh, actually, I remember now. I was thinking about this this morning. This is an interesting thing. So you take a white supremacist, right? Mm-hmm. One of the things that um, that they argue, there's no room, you know, like when they're trying to be more reasonable, mm-hmm. is that there's no room for us. There's no room for white people in culture. When they're pushing white people out of culture, and what I realized this morning was have a culture and you'll guess what? Awesome. The reason white people are being pushed out of culture is because of people like you. Yeah. If you're, you guys weren't yeah. dicks, then nobody would be saying, Hey, white man, shut the fuck up. If white people were always nice and accommodating to other people of other colors and other sexes, then nobody would be saying, like, hey, you you don't have an opinion. And I'm not saying that that's right to say that to anybody, because I think that's a dick move too. But the reason it's happening is because of people being dicks. It's the cycle of dickness. Yeah, and you know, if if you look at you know, and if you look at it in the reality of, or you know, try to assume that reality is that these things are never going to go away. You know, like shitty white supremacist people are never going to go away. Um, religious fanatics that do horrible things are never going to go away. All of these things. They're, Vegans they're aren't going to go away. <laughs> oh, I'm just—I was trying to pick something on a on a not yeah, no, yeah, negative scale too. Why they yeah, something that's extreme but not necessarily um, dangerous? Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, Depending um, on if you're a cat or not. But it's like all these things. You know, people are going to fight and fight and fight. All of the stuff that you know, the topic that people fight about. You know, religion people fight about. Um, money people fight about. Well, I mean, let's forget about money. But like, you know. Um, economics yeah economics the benefits of being one way or the other um all this stuff's never gonna disappear you know um of course not and it shouldn't right and imagine what life would be like if we not not to say that bad things are good but imagine what life would be like if everything was just flat yeah there were no peaks and no valleys and just like so what'd you do today oh you know 
I just the key, lived. The key, the, <laughs> the key and the point is for all of that is to understand like it's never going to go away. It's never going to change. There might be new things that pop up. Some things might go away. They'll just be replaced by something else similar, but you know, branch off. And the matter of uh, finding just the the space to fit in, like those people saying like there's no space for a white culture. No, what you're saying is there's no space for your cult, your white culture. That's unique to you with yeah. your hatred and your there's no room for assholes uh, there's no room in the grand you know huge well no there is there's room there's room for you in your little tiny pocket over there and you stay mm-hmm. over there in your tiny little pocket what you're trying to do is you're trying to be part of that big wider larger population pocket and they don't want you so go stay over there where you've because you've chose to be in that little tiny subculture so hang out over there where it's where everyone is thinking the same, feeling the same, and agrees, and you're all comfortable. Stop trying to move over into the other ones because there's no space for you over there, like you said. So stay where there is space for you. You know, I don't try to go someplace like you know if I'm walking in a crowded um, um, like stadium or some shit, and there's a shit ton of people standing at a bar, and there's no space. It's like, well. There's no space for me. And I just go to try to shove my way in where somewhere there's no way for me to physically fit there. It's like, well, there's no space for me. Well, yeah. So go stand where there is space. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Yes, it does. It makes perfect sense. Stand where there's space for you. Don't try to go where there's not space for you. And if there's going to be, it's going to happen. If not, woe is me. Cry, cry, cry. So, you know, even look, fuck, I can do something as stupid as compared to the fucking dinosaurs. You know, you had, if you believe that dinosaurs existed, there was dinosaurs that only ate meat and there was dinosaurs that only ate plants and there was dinosaurs that probably ate both. And I guarantee you there was points in time where they knew where they were supposed to be and they hung out in their own regions, in their own areas. And it carries on into our animal kingdom today. You can see a bunch of fucking lions lying around and antelope walking within four feet of them and got along perfectly fine. And then there's some days where you don't want to be in their space and they stay away from that. You know, it's like there's an understanding. There's a harmony that can happen in disharmony. With Well, people. there's a perfect example of what you just said there of something that's able to be taken out of context and used against you. Yeah, let them fucking drink. You could take what you said about, you know, don't go up to the bar. If there's not room, you know, take that and apply that to the trans community. Now you're being a dick, Right. Um, you could take that and apply that to the civil rights movement. Like, shouldn't elbow your way in. You know what I mean? Like, th- th- I'm not. I'm not saying that you believe those things. First of all, for clarification for anybody, yes, um, he definitely does not. <laughs> I would not be having conversations with him <laughs> if he did. But those are things that people could that people do. This is the type of shit that people are doing. They'll take something like that and go, "Oh, he says that." You know, that you shouldn't try to edge your way into society. Well, if you didn't, you know, we wouldn't have black comedians and we wouldn't have this. Yes, that's absolutely true. Sometimes you do have to edge your way in. <laughs> but uh, you, but th- that's the complexity of talking is sometimes that something that you're saying is right in the usage that you're using it. But when you apply it other places, it becomes something completely different. Right. Yeah. But, and that's yeah. why context and intent are so fucking important. Because when we take away somebody's context and take away someone's intent, we're the asshole. We're the abuser. Yeah. I mean, how many times have you seen it in like a, you know, in a courtroom drama or something like that where it's like, would you please read um, the highlighted section of your statement? Like, well, out of context, it doesn't work. It's like, right. Know, like, I'll kill you. That's one that people. Before or after, then it's like, you, you know, then you don't really understand what I'm saying. Or you forcing know, like, a yes or no question when the answer is not a yes or no. Right. It's like you could take, you know, someone's 500 page, um, you know, novel or uh, just kind of anything that they've written with any kind of, you know, and just go through and highlight select words here and there and just be like, can you just please, right, can you just go please highlight or read the highlighted words spanned over 500 pages? You can create whatever the fuck you want out of that. Yeah. I guarantee it. Well, so you could you could literally take take pieces of sentences from here and craft like something completely the opposite of what we're saying and make something completely racist. Dude, there's videos all over YouTube of people doing that where you take speeches and like remember when Tom told Chad to to dress up like a white supremacist and ride the bus? Yeah. Or like, like you could, I think it was more so you could have taken it so like 
Remember the time that Tom said he can't wait to see when Chad's going to dress up in his white supremacist thing and ride the bus? Um, but like, I'm sure I can find a video on YouTube or somewhere where you know they've taken and edited like a B- Obama speech or speeches into him like rapping or like saying you know a, singing a song word for word the lyrics because right. there's only so many words so you can cut and paste that shit all you want and put it to music and oh suddenly here's whoever singing the most kind of off the wall fucking song just because they've said more than you know a thousand words on their lifetime and it's on record but you know but i'm kind of maybe to fine tune a little bit of what i was saying was um take time you know and maybe not be so like force like or not forceful but not so like quick to be like well i want to be here it's like well maybe figure out how to fit in before you just fly off saying that i can't fit in right you know um but it's possible for us all to choose to you know i know people that you know i don't agree with their fucking ways of thinking and that's just something that i know i don't fucking do anything with that because what bearing does it have on me none i have my own shit i gotta fucking worry about i got my own life i want to fucking try to live and moves i want to try to make or um i think the less people are dicks and assholes yeah, the more like room, I, the more possible it becomes for there to be room at the table for everyone. I've heard my best friends that I love more than anything that I would fucking crawl over fucking landmines and kill people for. I've heard them say things that I don't agree with and that I don't believe. Does that change anything about how I am with them or how I view them or how much time I spend around them or what it means to me? You know, what we have together, what we do together, or, you know, when someone with one of those people dies, does it hurt me any less? No, it doesn't. Right. Well, and look at people. Look at people whose um, grandparents were racist. Yeah. It's pretty, or not, maybe maybe for people listening who are a little bit younger, your great grandparents. Hmm. You know, like they were around during the Civil War, and then maybe you know, like, or you know, somebody listening, like, um, their family back in history owned slaves. Does that mean that that person is any less important to you <laughs> being born right now? No. And if it's like your grandparent and you actually knew them, does it mean you love your grandparent less? No. Because the thing is, this shit, it's not binary. It's not on or off. It's not black or white. It's both. You know, like Bill Cosby is a fucking rapist and probably one of the most prolific serial rapists in history. Yeah, he also gave a lot of money to the United Negro College Fund, and a lot of people went to college, got educations, and became doctors and lawyers. A lot of society changed. A lot of of um, you know the 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 color of the color palette of skin tones in the professional world got more varied because of his money. Mm-hmm. Both of those things are true. Does one redeem him of the other? No. But does the other negate the other? No. They're both yeah. fucking true. And if you're having the conversation about one or the other, those two things don't really play into one another. Right. You can talk about something and not address everything else that is, you know, almost not related, but, um, you know, connected only by one thing. You know, if they're right. actually if there's actually a direct line connecting one to the other, where it's like, you know, he's accused of um, doing things to, you know, I don't know. I can't even think of the hypothetical situation, but. Um, how about Michael Jackson made good music? He also raped kids. Well, how many times have that, you know, were there are people, I just was reading actually an article in um, Billboard magazine um, just a couple of days ago where uh, there was that whole thing of when, um, that HBO movie came out, the documentary. Oh yeah, something. Uh, find, leaving, not, it's not finding Neverland. Leaving uh, Neverland, I think. Yeah, it's, it's I never. Like, I haven't seen it. I don't have HBO, but I, I haven't seen it either. I just uh, didn't think heard, I could deal with it. Yeah, I've heard about it. And um, there was this huge thing of like, you know, what do we, like, you know, what do we do? Do we we must, you know, do we erase we him? Exactly. So radio stations said they would not play his music anymore and remove him from their catalogs and all this shit. And um, there was a hit on, uh, you know, um, 
his popularity, I guess, or whatever. And um, the the Jackson Estate, you know, um, sued HBO for you know because he wasn't alive to defend himself, and no one could substantiate claims and whatever, whatever, whatever. But you know, yeah, there was a moment where there was the fear of like, I can't listen to Michael Jackson. Like, what if someone you know knows that I listen to Michael Jackson? It's like, well, are you listening to his music, or are you you know listening to for the just are you listening to it just for the fact of what the music is you know like i can listen to a person's song and enjoy it and not like the person right you well there I mean, there are comp- complexities even the there person. like for example like i could listen to beat it just fine right. i don't know that i'll ever listen to pretty young thing the same way ever again well that's i mean but again i don't know that hearing michael jackson say i want to love you pretty young thing you need some love and tender love and care yeah. is ever going to be untainted well that's, and that's, that's okay that's, but that's that's a choice that you're making to think of it as the person singing sometimes you can just listen to a song and just hear it as a song you don't it doesn't have to have an i in uh well it doesn't mean that it needs to be removed from radio well that's the thing is that in the article it kept going saying that you know his popularity and sales and stuff on like uh, different platforms is actually up and it's continuing to go up and it will, you know, because, because the music's fun and it makes people happy. And most people listen to it. Know, aren't thinking about choose. that. They shit. choose to believe that it actually happened. They choose to believe that it didn't. And either way, there's still going to be overlaps where even the people that believe that he did do things that um, he was, you know, accused of and found innocent of doing and people still claim that he did and for push and push and push that he did. There's still people that believe that stuff and think that he, you know, was a, uh, you know, a predatory monster with a lot of issues. Um, but that will still listen to his music because they cannot deny that, you know, they like the music where they found a way to disconnect from, you know, creation and creator. Well, yesterday was that have thrill. I mean, yesterday was Halloween. I guarantee you, there was a lot of parties still playing Thriller. Uh, watching the 49ers game, um, the Pettis scored a touchdown, caught an amazing pass, and what was his touchdown dance? He did the Thriller dance, and <laughs> there was a slew of people that put it up. It's like you know, said nothing about Michael Jackson being a pedophile or you know accused of being a pedophile, and it was just like. Um, Almost like, hey, check this out. You know, Pettis does a thriller dance. How awesome and cool is that? You know, on Halloween. So, right. It, and that's the, and that's the weird thing too that people, you know, like why did he do that? Right. He didn't do it because he was even thinking about Michael Jackson. Right. He did it because he grew up in a time where that video was huge. Yeah. And it's part of who he is, not Michael Jackson and not Michael Jackson's. N- possible sexual proclivities yeah. um, or crimes is probably a better word than proclivities, but because that video and that music was a part of his childhood, right? Yeah. So he was moved to do that because of that. And so it's all complex. Yes. It, it will just, for the sake of this, we'll just assume Michael Jackson did it. It still doesn't change, you know, like you can attribute something to someone, you know, you can say like, Oh, he did that. And he should be ashamed because Michael Jackson was a pedophile. Mm. Why? He wasn't thinking about that. So why should he be be responsible for the fact that you're putting that on that situation? Now, yeah. uh, it's a completely different thing if he got up and said, I, I believe um, Michael Jackson should have been able to do what he did. Okay, mm. whoa, now you're crossing a, a societal line. That's just... Yeah. Well, you now know, you're they, just crossed into a realm of like, well, this is different discussions. Now we're looking at things with different colored glasses and under it's, different. It's like with Trump, and anybody who's listening to the show knows I can't fucking stand the guy. But there are times when he says things and people are like, oh my God, that was so racist. And I look at it and I'm like, I don't see it. Hmm. Like it just seemed in the like, you know, this is a whole dog dog whistle thing. Okay, fine, that's possible. But I'm not, you know, like there's so many questionable things. And there are, I think there are things that he's definitely said that for me, I was like, okay, for me, that came across as racist. Um, That one, not so much. You know, like, I just don't see it. So we're putting things on people. And I think that's the problem is we're, we're projecting ourselves on other people. And for, to make ourselves feel good. You know, like if a lot of people that they want Michael Jackson to have been a pedophile, why? 
because maybe they, you know, like they just need to feel better about themselves. Like, yeah. fuck that guy. Now, at least, you know, like when I'm at a party and somebody puts on Thriller, I can be like, fuck this dude. Oh, now I'm the guy who called it out. I'm, I'm the guy that called that out. Now I'm, you know, it's like a score five points for me. And now I'll do the throw dance to celebrate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cool. But uh, I can imagine this. Imagine you like came across this book. <clears throat> and the book, you know, maybe it was like a, a book on life and something super philosophical or something that just you think there's no way that someone could have written a book this perfect for you and it just like opened up your eyes wider than they've ever been. It stimulated everything that you've answered every question. It just made you understand your life and you and the world around you and you found like everything you've been looking for. And then find out that the the name of the author that was that wrote the wrote the book was um you know like a um a pseudonym or so it's a fake name, you know, it's like, oh, well, just put it. and that the actual person that wrote it, um, you know, because when you saw the book and you saw the author and it was like a, a no name person, it was his first book. No one's ever heard of this guy. He came out of nowhere. And then you find out that the person that did write the book actually does not believe anything that he had said, you know, or his beliefs are exact opposite of yours, mm-hmm. but he still wrote the book. That doesn't that, change what the book means, right? That's what right. You're, so, right. So separate yourself. You, that is the creation. Yeah, creation from the creator. Exactly. It doesn't, matter. it doesn't fucking because before, before you knew who the actual person was, you're perfectly fine with it. It was right. everything you needed. Well, does an all, actor all who plays a villain are they a bad person in real life because they exactly. played a villain? No, and some no. people people if, will carry that Ray over. finds a Nazi because he played one. Right. right. People carry that over. I remember, you know, I had to, a long time ago. I think I had to do something where it was like I, I saw. You know, you're used to Eddie Murphy being, you know, Nutty Professor and all that stuff. And I think it was Nutty Professor, like where he was like an asshole when he's the skinny version. Mm-hmm. There was like the other part of him. I'm like, you see an actor do play something like that so well that you're like, is that really how they are? And it's like you almost had to like remind yourself, like, no, I don't know this person. And um, that's their job. My, my opinion on whether or not they're good or not. It's like, because then you come up in conversation like, man, I think Eddie Murphy's a fucking asshole. It's like, really? Have you ever met this person? You know, like how many times have you heard that? Where it's like, I hear he's a fucking mm-hmm. jerk. Uh, why? Who told you that? How do you know? Did you ever meet him? You ever been around him? You ever done anything with him? No. Well, think about this too. Like, think about two people meet and they fall in love. And then they find out after they're married and they have children, they're cousins. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> is I mean, is that gross? Or, or even worse, this has happened before. They find out know. that they're they're adopted and they're brother and sister. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Twenty three me ancestry dot com. I'm sure have done that quite a few times. But at the same time, you have to say like, did they do anything wrong? Of course not. They had no fucking idea. Yeah. It's going to be probably weird going forward, especially right. if it's, it's the brother choice. sister thing, not the well, cousin thing. Because well, it's that's it goes. It always goes back to me with choices. Like that's then when it makes, you know, a point because now it's conscious. Now it's a choice. Like you've now, whatever you do next, those are choices you're making with all of the knowledge that, that's possible to have at that moment for you. And that's then when um, some type of uh, kind of change on outlook or opinion can come up. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, um, it's all these different weird little things that can uh, just get know. tangled. They all get yeah, no, tangled. And then that's, I mean, that's basically what this whole episode has been about. We're all fucking tangled up. We got to just take some time and unravel some shit. Be nicer to people. Don't be reactionary. Chill the fuck out. Yeah. Like, be the person that you want other people to be. You want to be a kind person. I try to remember too that you don't always know, you know, and, and it's it's one of those phrases and points that's made a lot, and I don't think um, can ever be over overly made. Um, is that you never know what other people are going through, you know, you don't know what struggles, you know. It's like I I do that all the time. Where I have to remind myself, you know, because you know I have my own stresses and issues and things that you know I'm constantly fucking battling with and feeling just buried and drowning within and 
um, you know, I've got guilt and um, stresses and anxieties and worries and all that stuff. And it's like, sometimes I'll let that get to me and then I become reactionary and I'm like, you know, I kind of lash out at other people or whatever. But then I'm like thinking like, what if that person that I'm just so like annoyed with right now and that I'm just being short with, what if they're struggling with the exact same type of stuff that I am? And or worse. Yeah. And it's like, well, I know how like, I What if the guy you cut off Therefore, in traffic because you're in yeah. a hurry has yeah. cancer? Yeah. And you just flipped off that old man because he almost ran, sideswiped you in a, in a stoplight, which I did the yeah. other day and I felt and bad. And he just and lost his wife two days before or something. Yeah. You know, it's like, I mean, that's that's a rabbit hole you're going to fucking fall down if you just think about it every single thing because then you're just walking around just being like like I said an asshole like a, soft, a softy pushover well, no it's just like I gotta be nice to everybody well, I don't want to oh yeah feelings. don't be fake you know, like, right but it's like just but be, just be charitable you know? charitable yeah. And it's like yeah I understand that tempers can flare and things can boil over and you can just kind of come to a breaking point and all that but it's like I feel like if you always keep and I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of not being able to stick to my own advice, but if you always keep a, a level of, all right, before I really react or get to a point or decide, you know, I feel this way or that way, or, you know, this is how I see this situation or don't just take that moment of like, take a step back, take a step back and look at it from an outside perspective and look at the bigger picture. Like how important is this right now? You know, how much bearing does this really have in the grand scheme of things? Okay, it doesn't because a lot of most of the time it won't. You know, parking spots doesn't really have a grand, um, a, a, a huge influence or influence at all over the grand scheme of your life. Um, you know, whether or not you are going to find happiness or not, it, it, it doesn't. So, all of those little things really, really try your hardest, and we're all going to falter, but really try your fucking hardest to. Just kind of let them go, let it slide. Try to pay attention to what it, you know, use, utilize your time on the things that really are fucking point. Like, trying to, if you're struggling with yourself, try to use like use that time to figure out what you need to do to to right whatever it is that you feel is wrong within your within you or what's going on with you. Um, and then, if you feel like you've perfected yourself, move on to trying to help other people. I don't know. All right, guys. Well, we are oh, we're done. Oh, we're done now. Oh, okay. Yeah. We are back and we are <laughs> on fire. This is a crazy episode. Yeah, talk about um, a lot of shit. A lot of shit that's going to be thrown back at us. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> if nobody listens. Um, if you guys want to help support this show, please go over to patreon.com forward slash holy full productions. Become a patron. You can hear the chatter that shit that we talked about before we started this episode about 40 minutes today. Um, you listen in an overcast, hit the star, share this episode with a friend, rate and review it in Apple Podcasts, tell people about the show. Just anything that helps us will be helpful. That's why we use the word help in it twice. Help us. Help us. Um, and you can also follow Random Badassery on Instagram and Twitter. And you can follow Tom. Where can I follow you, Tom? At Sir Period Beardo. Sir Period Beardo. That's S I R period B E A R D O. And uh, Latte is also the Latte, the dog who finally went to sleep in the middle of this episode, is uh, Latte like the drink on Instagram. If you like looking at dog pictures. What drink does he like? What drink does the dog like? Yeah. Anything that anything that he shouldn't be drinking. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but his name is going off of Latte like the drink, not Latte yeah. like the drink. It's it's a it's a proper it's, sentence, not a, a bad grammar of like you know. Well, it's a it's a reference to Green Mile. John Coffee, like the drink. Oh, right. Never got that one. Yep. Now, now I see it. But I was thinking I was read it as if like, you know, you're saying like, oh yeah, you know, grandpa, grandpa liked the drink. <laughs> no. Latte. Like, I, like I thought, I thought, I thought as in the latte. drink. Oh, yeah, I got you. All right, now I got it. Mm, all right, everybody. Um, bye-bye, babies. Toodles. Oh!